hello youtube welcome back to the channel so in today's tutorial we're going to continue with our build uh, our series on building uh, a backend for a blog application the folder here in here i'm going to call this folder api and inside this folder i'm going to simply go ahead and move my main.py file that we created last time inside of that folder and once that's done i'm simply going to go ahead and create an underscore underscore init uh, file inside of this folder so i'm going to say uh, uh, underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py file okay so there's going to be an, an init file inside of this folder so once i have that then i'm also going to go ahead and create another folder and this is going to be called routes okay and this is going to be called the routes folder and this way we're going to keep all our routes and stuff like that okay so let's go ahead and actually test this out and make sure everything works but before we do that instead of my routes folder i'm going to create so create an underscore underscore init uh, underscore underscore dot py uh, folder file inside of the routes itself so once we have the init file created uh, underscore underscore init file created inside of our roots folder that's we're going to keep all our, our our routes and stuff like that so we're going to keep it right here instead of our routes and then you're going to import it instead of main and simply use it right here so let's go actually like, create a simple uh, route for the users because you're going to do the users registration so i'm going to call this users.py and instead of users.py i'm just going to go ahead and import a uh, fast api uh, router so i'm going to say from uh, first api right i want to go ahead and import the api uh, router so api router so once i have that created uh, imported i'm going to go ahead and create a router object so i'm going to say uh, api router and this is just going to be a router like this and you're going to pass in the tags of this router so i'm going to say tags and it's going to be a list of tags okay so the tags i'll show you just in a second what are the tags so i can say user uh user routes and just like that i'm going to call it user routes and instead of this user routes i'm simply going to create a simple uh return just to say hello call just to make sure everything works so it's going to be very similar to this right here so in fact i can simply copy this right here and then move it inside of uh, uh here and then simply paste it but one thing we need to do we don't have app so we need to instead of app we need to say router and i can say this one just get and this is just going to be uh we can just change this to be message uh msg and this is going to be hello world okay hello uh, world just like that so once we have this uh, done we, we need to go ahead and import it and use it inside of our our main right so instead of our main we don't need uh, all of this so i'm just going to delete all of this we don't need this typing for now so i'm going to also get rid of this so this is all i need i'm still going to go ahead and say app dot include uh include router and i'm simply going to go ahead and, and use that router so i'm going to import it and use it right here so i'm going to say from dot router uh, import i'm going to go ahead and import uh users just like that and in here i'm simply going to say uh users dot uh, uh this is going to be users dot uh, dot router okay so this is going to be uh from routes not routers so from routes import uh users and then i'm going to say users dot router and you're going to include that router so that's all we need to do to include that uh, information so once we have this done let's go ahead and actually test it to make sure everything works so i'm going to go inside of my terminal and inside of my terminal i'm just going to clear this and make this uh, okay so i hope you guys can see uh once i have this done i'm simply going to go ahead and say uvicon so uvicon and then api dot main okay and i'm going to refer to the app instance and explain this to you in the last tutorial so once we have this done i'm simply going to run the api and this is going to start the development server running on local host at port 8000 so i can simply just copy this uh, uh this uh, url or local host at port 8000 and simply go and ahead and paste it inside of my browser So here I am inside of my browser and inside of my browser I'm just going to have a local host at port 8000 and I simply I can simply just press enter to get access to that uh, that page and uh, once it's loaded we, we are going to go ahead and go to the documentation sector so to go to the document pass you just have to say forward slash docs and it's going to take you to the swagger UI so I'm going to simply say forward slash docs just like this and I'm simply going to press enter and this is going to take me to the swagger UI section where I can see all the swagger UI of that first API provider so if I just uh, expand on this I can see this right there so I'm, I can simply click on try it out and then execute this so you're just going to get a message back saying hello world and that is coming from the from the from the users uh, module the users uh, the, the users dot file right here so we have everything set up so i'm just going to go ahead and close this init file since we don't need them for now so once we have all of that done i also need to go ahead now and set up my database so that i can get the user's information and then save the user's information inside of our database so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to go inside of my browser and i'm going to go to uh, mongodb atlas so you can just go up here and then you can click on try for free uh, for free if you already have an account you can just click on sign up like i, I already do so i'm going to click on sign up and once this page is loaded up i can go ahead and actually uh, sign up 
So once the page is loaded uh, here, I'm just going to go ahead and click on login with Google and it's going to log in with my Google uh, email account. Uh, so I don't have to remember my email and stuff like that. So that's one of the advantage of using uh, login with Google. And once this is uh, loaded, And when this is loaded right here, I'm simply going to click on this part here to go back to the very uh, root of our project of my of my account. And in there, I'm going to go ahead and create a new database. And, you're, and instead of that database, you're going to create a simple cluster. And instead of that cluster, you can create a, a database and you can have different uh, collections. And the collections can be used to store different information. So let's just wait for this to uh, page to load up. So once the page is loaded up right here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, project instead of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, simply, uh, I'm just going to say add new project. So just click on add new project right here. So I'm going to give this project a name right here. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's say blog uh, API. So blog API, just like that. And I'm just going to click on uh, next. So once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and I need to fill in this part. So the users, I'm going to leave it to be default and I'm going to click on uh, create the project. So the default user is going to be my email and this is just me. So uh, once this project is created, you can simply go ahead and create a collection. But first of all, we need to set up a couple of things to get this uh, running. So I need to go ahead and create a database. So I'm just going to click on this and create a database. And this is how you can create a database on Mongo. So you have these different options. You have the serverless, you have the dedicated, and then you also have the free option, which is the shared. So I'm going to go with the free option because uh, this I'm not going to pay for any database services from MongoDB. I'm just going to use the free version. So I'm going to go ahead and create a free cluster. So create that. So you can read about all of this and all you can choose all the stuff that you want. So they ask me for a bridge. Uh, yeah, I think this one's and then verify. Yes, yeah, so once I have that, I can just go ahead and wait for that to get loaded. So once this is loaded, we are brought to this page right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this. So we can say the username, uh, we can just say uh, Prince, uh, which is my username. And then I can auto generate some password. So I can generate some random password. Or you can even generate your own, use your own password if you want. So once you're done, you can just go ahead and create that user. Uh, so I'm going to create user right here and that user should be created. So once the, the user is created, I can also pass in the IP address. I'm going to use 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0, which is going to be for all the ports, right? I don't want to uh, have any uh, restriction on which IP address can access this. So I'm going to say a uh, blog API. That's going to be the description. I'm going to simply uh, enter, uh, add that entry. And once it's done, I'm going to finish and uh, close. So I'm going to go to, go to database. And uh, once we have that done, our database now is set up. So this may take some time to create this. You can say uh, a new cluster takes uh, between one to three minutes to uh, to provide. So just wait. Uh, and once this is done, you can go ahead and begin to code. So once we have the database created and it took some time to create it, so I just give it some time and uh, now the database is set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on connect and then we can get grab the, U the URL for this. But for now, we'll just leave this. We'll come back just in a second and we'll come back to this just in a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this up. So we'll come back to this just in a second. But for now, what we need to do, we need to import in, install a couple of libraries. So I'm just going to go to pypy.org and we need to install a couple of libraries. The first we need to install, we need to install Mongo, uh, PyMongo. Okay, so we need to install PyMongo. So you can just go to the official documentation or simply just uh, type in, uh, post the video and type in this command. Or you can go to pypy.org and then you can simply search for PyMongo in here. So I'm going to go ahead and install, uh, first of all, we need to install the PyMongo installation. So I'm going to copy that, go into my terminal. And instead of my terminal, I'm just going to stop my development cell for now. And then simply clear the terminal and simply paste the other command that I've copied. And then simply run it. Make sure your virtual environment is activated so that this can be installed inside of your virtual environment. So once it's done, that is done installing. Uh, we also need to install, uh, uh, we need to install uh, PyMongo SRV in order to work with Mongo SRB, uh, SRV URLs. So I'm so also going to copy this right here and I'm going to go inside of my terminal. And once this is done, I'm still going to paste this to install this as well. So just give it some time to install. And yeah, we also need to go ahead and install a couple more. We need to install .env, uh, .env module in order to work with uh, this database because we're going to be using a .env file because I don't want to open up my secrets for uh, everyone to see. So I'm going to go into dot, uh, dot .env. So I'm going to search here for dot, uh, .python .env. So I'm going to say uh, python is going to be a python uh, dot 
here in vfl and i'm going to simply search for that so you can just go to this website of pipe.org and then put type in uh, this so i'm going to simply go in ahead and click on the very first one and py, uh, dot python env uh, just simply help us to manage our uh, environment uh, help us work with uh, env files basically and that's what uh, that's what you're going to simply do because i'm going to keep my other information such as the mongodb url inside of an env file because i don't want to push this to any github repository or anything like that so once this is done i'm just going to go ahead and simply paste that there and simply install dot env as well so yeah that's all the things we need for now and uh, we can go ahead and begin to actually uh uh, so i already have this already installed so i can just go ahead and actually clear the terminal so once i have this installed i can go back to vs code and instead of my vs code uh, here i'm going to go ahead and simply create a new uh, file so i'm going to instead of my api i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call this one schemas okay so uh, schemas dot pi so schemas dot pi is where we're going to keep our database schema and do our database configuration i'm also going to go ahead and create a dot env file so i'm going to say dot env okay so a full stop and then env so this we're going to keep our database connections i'm going to say mongo uh, mongodb uh, mongodb underscore uh, url so this is going to be the url for mongodb uh, database so i'm going to go back into uh, into my database right here into uh, sorry into our mongodb database right here click on connect and now you're going to say connect to application connect your application and simply select python so select python and not node and the python version you can say 3.6 and above because i'm using python 3.8 so i'm simply going to go ahead and copy this and i'm going to go uh, inside of my vs code and simply paste it here so you need to change a couple of things the first thing you need to pass in here is your password so i'm going to go ahead and pass in my password and uh, sorry uh, my password rather yeah so let me just go back yeah, i need to pass in my password and then the name of my database which i just created right so our name of our database is called blog uh, api and then we need to pass in our password so i'm just going to go back in here and just click on close and i'm going to go back to the database access and then i'm going to simply grab my password so i have this user right here which which has a uh, super power so pri super privileges so i'm going to go ahead and say edit password i'm going to generate a new password i'm going to simply copy it and i'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, save update the user so once i have the new the newly copied password i'm going to go into my vnv uh, env file and simply paste the password in here so i'm going to paste that password in here so that's all we need and you can see our database is, co is called a uh, blog api that we have right here so once i have that set up i can go back into my uh, uh into my uh into my code right here and uh, we can go ahead and actually use pymongo to create install uh, to create a connection with uh, mongodb so i'm going to go in and I'm going to say import uh, import uh, motor this is going to be motor dot um, motor we also need to install the motor library so let's go ahead and actually uh, search this and also install it so i'm just going to go to pypy.org and then i'm going to go ahead and search for that as well so i'm going to say uh, we need to ins install pymotor right so motor and then let's search for that right here so once i have this i'm going to click on the first one and this is a uh, what we used to work with uh, mongodb so you can read about the mo motor and what is all useful so it supports asynchronous programming and that's what we want here so we need to go ahead and simply copy this and simply install it so i'm going to copy this and go ahead and install it so i'm going to go in here and simply paste that command and install motor so once this is done installing i'm going to go in here and say motor dot motor underscore ASCII async uh, async io so i'm going to say async uh, async io so let's just wait for this to get installed so that error can uh, go away so once we have that done i'm going to say from motor import async io so this once i have that done i'm also going to go ahead and import a couple of things so i'm going to go ahead and import uh, from uh, dot uh, env i'm going to go ahead and uh, import uh, load env so load env can enable us to load our python uh, virtual environment so i'm just going to go here and say uh, load env so once i have that i'm going to say load underscore env uh, sorry en uh, en en uh, env so once i have that i'm just going to go ahead and call that function there so it's going to load all our uh, all our pro all our project dependencies instead of the environment so once i have that i'm going to go ahead and create a client which is going to connect to dot uh you're going to say uh asynchronous io uh, motor client so we're going to say this one right here asynchronous io motor client and in here we need to provide our uh, our environment our url to connect to our database right so 
I'm going to go ahead and attempt it. I don't need all of this. I'm just going to delete it. So I'm going to say import. Uh, I'm going to import OS. So I'm going to be using the OS library to actually read the ev environment variables that have been loaded by this function right here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually specify the 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 the, the our, our our URL for our database, which is going to be what we stored inside of our ENV right here. So I call it MongoDB uh, URL. So I'm going to go here and say uh, instead of my schema, I'm going to say uh, OS dot load uh, OS dot get env just like that and simply passing the env uh, the name of that uh, env uh, environment variable which is called mongodb url which is what we use right here so this is going to connect me to uh, my mongodb database and i can simply go ahead and say a db and i'm going to create a collection i'm going to simply say client uh, client dot uh, i'm going to call this one blog uh, blog underscore api just like that so it's going to create for us a, a simple co collection or database instead of our, our we create a simple collection and inside of that collection we can have multiple documents and stuff like that so once we have that that set up that's all we need to have to connect to uh to set up our mongodb database so the first thing i'm also going to go ahead and do is actually write um write our uh, schemas so to write our schemas one thing we need to go over is uh, one important thing you need to understand is that mongodb uses uh uses um uses a uh, bison uh, so it's going to use more this more db uses a bison okay and uh, and fast api uses uh, fast api uses a json okay uh, and uh, fast api uses json so for us to be able to uh, work with the ids and stuff like that so we need to actually convert the bison right into a json for that we need to have a python we need to uh, encode the uh, the ids and stuff like that using uh, an, 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 uh, a python uh, object id so i'm going to go and actually import it here so i'm going to say uh, i'm going to go up here and i'm going to say um from uh, bison i'm going to go ahead and import uh, i'm going to i'm going to go ahead and import the following so i'm going to say object uh, id right here so once i have that imp uh, this can be a capital o so object id so from bison i'm going to go ahead and import the object uh, id so object id just like that so once we have that imported uh yeah we can begin to actually write the code but down here to encode the the json into json that the first api can understand and uh and uh, vice versa so i'm going to create a class and this class is going to be called pi uh, object so i'm going to say pi object and uh, pi object uh, pi object id so i'm just going to call it pi object id and it's going to be taking the pi uh, uh, object id so once i have that done i'm going to have a class method here so i'm going to say class uh, class method so class method and instead of this class method you're going to have a function okay and then we say underscore underscore get underscore underscore uh, underscore valley validator validators and then i'm going to say underscore uh, underscore underscore and this is going to take in the self keyword so self uh we, so, sorry i'm going to take, uh, actually take in the class and the class and instead of this function you're going to si simply yield uh yield something so we're going to yield and you're going to simply say class dot uh validator valley uh class dot validate okay validate okay let me just see vs code is blocking this so i'm going to say validate just like that so i'm going to say class dot validate and this is going to be uh needs to be a small letter v and not capital letter v so uh underscore so get validators and then underscore underscore and this is going to take in a class and it's going to simply yield uh class dot validators and in here we're going to have another class method and this is actually going to be the the the, val the validator that we we define up there so i'm going to simply say have a function i'm going to call it validate validate and this is going to take in the form going to take in the class and it's going to take in uh, a variable called v and you're simply going to do the following you're going to simply say uh, if uh, not uh, object id object uh, id dot is uh, underscore valid right if object id dot is not uh, dot is valid what is valid the object is going to pass in v there and then you're simply going to say uh, raise uh, a value value error so value uh, value error we're going to raise a value error and you're going to say that invalid uh, object id so we're going to simply have a string here and it's going to say invalid uh in uh valid uh you uh, invalid object id object uh, id just like that and uh and uh, also going to have we're going to simply go ahead and return you're going to simply return object uh, object id of the v that we got okay so if it's invalid uh, we're simply going to raise the uh, uh, an error saying that the ob object id is invalid also you're simply going to go ahead and return the object id by passing in the v okay which which is an argument that we took here so i'm also going to have another class method right here so class method and this class method is going to have a function and it's going to be underscore underscore modify uh, underscore schema so modify schema so modify schema underscore underscore and you're going to take in a uh, class and then you're also going to take in a 
uh, field underscore schema so underscore schema so field schema and that's all we need and then under this uh, method right here you're going to have the following so we're going to say uh, field underscore uh, schema dot uh, dot update so field schema dot update and I'm going to go ahead and update the phone so I'm going to say type and the type is going to be a uh, string so I'm going to provide in here uh, a string of st a string containing the word string inside so once I have that done yeah that's all we need for our 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 our, our, our our pi object encoder so this is going to help us to deal with the conversion between bison and json okay because uh, mongodb works with uh, bison and then first api needs to work with json so that is going to help us with that conversion so once i have that done i'm also going to go ahead and create the users uh, the users uh, schema so this user schema is what you're going to be using to um, work with the user model right but user, because user can register and all of that right so we need to use the base model that we have from pydentic so we're going to say from pydentic you're going to go ahead and import the base model so i'm going to go up here so i'm going to say uh, from uh, pydentic I'm going to import uh, the base base model just like that so once you have the base model imported we can just use it right here so we need to actually install uh, we install a couple of things for pydentic but we'll just do that just in a second so in, once you have here I'm going to simply inherit from the base model that we have and in here I'm going to have a user is going to have the following right a user schema is going to have the following it is going to have an ID and this is going to say I'm going to say it's gonna be pi object so this is gonna be pi object that class that we created and going to pass in simply a uh, pi object right and this is going to be it's going to be of type pi object which is this class that we define up here and this is going to be a field so we need to import the field from uh, pydentic again so from pydentic i'm going to going to go ahead and import a uh, field right here so i'm going to say field and the field is going to uh, have a default uh, factory and a default factory is going to be the class that we created so i'm going to go ahead and say uh, default uh, factory and a default factory is going to be the uh, pi of the, the pi object uh, class that we created pi object id class and then you're also going to have an alias so alias and first if you if you ever use mongodb you probably know that all the ids are underscore and then id right so i'm going to give you that alias there so once we have that done i'm also going to go ahead and specify a user can have a name or you can say a username but i'm going to use a name in this case it's going to be of type str and it's going to be a uh, field uh, just like that field and then in here i'm going to simply use uh, three dots dot 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 and then that's all and i'm going to have uh, an email so an email and the email is going to be of type string uh, it actually needs to be a pydentic email uh, for us to be able to use pydentic emails we need to install it first so let's go in the terminal and we, and we need to go ahead and install it so i'm just going to go inside of my terminal right here and instead of my terminal i'm going to go ahead and, and type in the following so i'm going to say pip uh, uh, pip uh, I can just use by pip, uh, pip install uh, and I'm going to simply say pydantic and I'm simply going to say uh, uh, square brackets and then email just like that to install the email validators for pydantic so once this is done installing we can go back uh, here so we just have to wait for it I'll check in up on it just in a second so in here I'm going to go ahead and import it from here so I'm going to also import uh, the email that I have the email str so I'm going to import the email string right here and uh, down here I'm, I'm going to go ahead and it's going to say uh, it's going to be email string and not just any string so email string and then I'm going to say fields uh, field and I'm going to say dot 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 and that's all we need for that so once we have the email uh, uh, said I'm also going to have a user also uh, can have a password right so the password is going to be of type string and the default I'm going to simply say goes to field and then uh, dot 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 Okay, so once we have that done, that's all I need. And I'm also going to provide in a class, uh, meta class. This is going to be a config class. We're going to call it config. And this is going to have the following. So when you say allowed, uh, allowed, allowed, uh, this is going to be allowed underscore population. So it's going to be allowed popu popu uh, population underscore uh, by underscore uh, field. Uh, field and then underscore name and this is going to be equals to the following so it's going to be equals to true we're going to simply say true so uh, this is going to be allowed uh, population and by field and it's going to be equals to true so make sure that you get that right so i, I hope i didn't make any errors typing that out and then we're also going to go ahead and specify the arbitrary so this is going to be a uh, so ab arbitrary arbitrary and this is going to be arbitrary underscore types uh, underscore uh, allowed so arbitrary types allowed and this is going to be equals to also true as well so once i have that done i'm also going to go ahead and say json uh, underscore encoder encoder and the encoders so json encoders is going to be uh, a dictionary and then we say object uh, id and then uh, it's going to be of type str 
that's all and then you're going to say uh, schema uh, schema uh, underscore extra and the schema extra is going to be equal to the following so the schema extra is going to be uh, having the following right so we're going to give you an example of how this field is going to look like when you show it in the uh, swag ui right? and this is something that i'll explain to you just in a second when we get there so uh, in here i'm going to have a name so we're going to have a name so a person can have a name right and we're going to show this in the swag ui and this is going to be maybe we can say uh, john doe so by default it will be pre-filled with this john doe uh, information okay so the email by default it will be pre-filled before the user changes it it will be pre-filled with uh, let's say john uh, doe uh, at uh, let's say at uh, example.com just like that and then we can have the 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 password of the user so it will be a string as well so password and the password is just going to be uh, let's say some random password or let's say secret uh, secret uh, underscore code just like that this, this is going to be an example so the user can know how to fill the the the, the, the response that's basically it and once we have that done uh yeah so this is going to go ahead and actually create the user schema for us and we can use this user schema inside of our instead of our, our our users to register a user so instead of our users.py instead of our routes and our routes we can simply go ahead and use this to actually register a user so instead of uh, the routes the routes uh, we can just go ahead and actually import it here so i'm just going to say uh, from dot dot uh, import from dot dot it's going to be called schema schemas import uh, i'm going to call user the user schema that we created so instead of the user schema that we created we can just go ahead and use it to create uh, the different st stuff that we want so before we can do this i want to go ahead and import a couple of things so i'm going to say from uh, first api uh, dot encoder encoders i'm going to go ahead and import uh, i'm going to go ahead and import json 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 uh, json noble uh, underscore encoder so underscore encoder that's all i need to do so from first api uh let me just get that right so this is going to be uh from first api dot encoder import the json jsonable encoder so once i have that done i can also go ahead and import uh yeah we can actually go actually write the code first so i'm going to go ahead and delete this right here and i'm going to have a a, po a, a, a post route so dot post so route dot post just like this and this post is just going to just going to go to first slash you can call this one registration so once we have that you can just simply say the following so this is going to have a response uh, a response description we can pass in a response uh, a response description response uh, description like the response description and this can, can be a uh, let's say register user so register a user just like that and uh, we can also prefer a response model but you haven't created the response model and we'll deal with that just in a second so i'm, I'm also going to have I'm, I'm going to be using an async function so async and it's going to be dev and i call I, I can call this one simply uh register or registration so registration and that's all we need so uh, instead of this registration we need to take in the user information right so we're going to take in the user uh, underscore info and the user info is going to be of type the user the user schema that we have right there so that's all we need for to get that done so i'm going to take in a user we're going to expect the user to pass in some information and the information should follow uh what is described inside of this schema right here so a person should have an id uh, this id will provide ourselves so person basically need a name an email and a password right we're not going to pass in the id to the front end so once uh, the user provides those in that information we can actually go ahead and actually register the user so i'm going to pro first process the user info info and this is going to be uh json json jsonable okay jsonable encoder and jsonable encoder is even going to go ahead and pass in the user underscore info okay to pro process that so once we have that check uh, created you're going to go ahead and check if the if the there is any um uh duplicates in our data set so i'm going to go ahead and actually we're going to go ahead and check uh check for duplicates so i'm going to say uh check or duplicate like if a user name already exists or if an email already exists so i'm going to say user uh, name uh, underscore found and this is going to be equals to uh, i'm going to await this process so i'm going to say await and i'm going to go ahead and actually import db okay so from our our schema so i'm going to go ahead and actually import db as well so i'm going to say i'm going to go here and say uh, db and you're going to search a collection called users okay users and then you're simply going to go ahead and say users dot uh, find underscore one and we're going to find one in which the the name is going to be equals to the user underscore info uh, the user info 
dot uh the user info dot uh username we can just so the dictionary so you can just use the square notation to get the name okay so we're going to find where where the username whether the username already exists okay and also we're going to go and actually find if the email already exists so we don't want any duplicate email or user uh, name so i'm going to say await and you're going to simply say await db and you're going to go ahead into the users and then you're going to say dot uh, find underscore one and you're going to pass in a dictionary here and this is going to be the following right so we're going to say uh we're going to start if the email already exists so we're going to say an email and it's going to be user underscore info uh and you're going to get the email so email so if this email already exists then or the username already exists then we will tell the user that they already exist so if user uh, username found right if username is found what is i'm going to do i'm going to simply raise a HT uh, http exception so i need to go ahead and actually import this http exception from fast api so from fast api i need to go ahead and uh, import that so i'm going to delete this i don't need this right here so i'm going to go ahead and export the http uh, exception right here so i actually don't uh, need this let me just delete this right here sometimes vs code just importing something which is really really annoying so uh, once i have that i'm going to delete this and it's going to be http exception so you're going to raise that http exception error right here and you're going to go ahead and pass in the following so we're going to go ahead and say uh the status code so i'm going to say uh, uh status underscore code and you're going to say uh you can pass in any status, status code that we want and you can also import this from uh it's a uh, fast api so i'm going to say status import status right here and you're going to simply go ahead and use it right here so i'm going to say status uh status dot uh uh, this is going to be uh, uh, a 409 a conflict so we're going to say uh, HTT, uh, http and you're going to go uh, let me just search for the 409 409 which is right here a conflict okay and then you can, you can also pass in the detail and you can what detail is what the user sees right so we're going to go ahead and, go ahead and say detail uh detail and the detail is going to be the following so the detail is going to be um uh, let's say that uh username username is uh already uh, taken please uh, choose it let's just say username is already taken and that is more than enough so once uh, we have that done we're also going to check if the email found so if the email is found so email underscore found right and uh, we're going to simply raise again a HTTP exception uh, we're going to raise a HTTP uh, exception and I'm going to pass in the status code and start status underscore code and the status code is going to be uh http uh 409 right so http and then uh, actually it's going to be a uh, status dot uh, http and then we're going to say 409 so i'm going to look for the 409 conflict actually this is actually supposed to be http and then 409 so i'm going to go ahead and go to the 409 section so this is the conflict so once we have that specified i can also go ahead and specify the detail that i want so i'm going to go ahead and tap this and say detail and the detail is going to be the following right and then you can say, say the email uh, uh already already uh taken so email email uh is already taken so email uh is here i'm going to say email is already taken and that is all that we need so in case the username already exists or the email exists we'll let the user know and not register them so once we have that i'm going to go ahead and actually go ahead and uh, uh save the user information so i'm going to say user uh, underscore info right user info and uh, we're going to go ahead and actually pass in a password field so pass password and the password field is going to be equals to a hash password so how do you hash passwords in a uh, fast api so to have fast to hash uh, to hash fast uh, passwords you can just go and search how to hash passwords in fast api and i'm going to go open up my browser so once my browser is open up i'm going to go to the fast api of your documentation and in here i'm just going to go ahead and search for password hash okay let's search for password hash uh search for password hash so it's going to be uh password so you can just click in here and then you can just check on the how to hash password so it's actually very simple and as we do this we'll be going to the fast api documentation so you guys can also learn the skills on how to uh, use the official documentation of fast api so uh once we have that i can just scroll down and i can see the place where we can actually hash the password so i'm just going to go here this is a password hashing uh, part so i'm going to install pass uh, passlib and from there we can use that one to hash our different passwords okay so that's what you're going to go ahead and uh, do right here so you can just scroll down and try to read this all this information so we're going to be using the passlib so i'm going to go ahead and actually install the passlib right here 
so i'm going to go uh, in here let me just check uh, what i use uh, when i was creating this project uh, so that you guys you can be in sync and not use any other different library because there are a couple of libraries that we have here i think there is password hash and then there is also this one okay i think i'm just going to go ahead with the password hash one yeah i think i'm going to go ahead and use this one right here so i'm going to go ahead and install this right here so i'm going to simply copy uh, this right here copy this and uh, go inside of my uh, terminal and i'm simply going to go ahead and paste this right here and run this command so it's going to install for us the password lib so once we have that ins uh, installed let's read and what we need to do so we need to go ahead and actually import this and create a context and all of that information okay so i'm just going to go into my vs code and instead of my vs code i'm going to go ahead and create uh, instead of my first api i'm going to go ahead and go ahead and create another file and i'm going to call this one utils.py so, so we're going to keep all our python utilities and uh, other help function so instead of there i'm just i'm just going to go ahead and say uh from uh pass lib pass lib uh from pass lib dot context I'm going to go ahead and import uh, the crypt, okay, crypt, con uh, crypt concept. Uh, so once I have that import, I'm going to go ahead and say password concept, and this is going to be equals to concept uh, password. Let me just say password let's call con context, and this is going to be equals to the following. So it's going to be called, uh, it's going to be an instance of the crypt, uh, crypt context that we just imported. And then you're going to go ahead and specify which scheme we want to use. So I'm going to say uh, schemes, and the scheme is going to be equals to we're going to be using a B script for this. So I'm going to say uh, B B script. And if you ever use Py uh, fast uh, uh, Flask in uh, in Python, you ever come across B script whenever you try to encrypt password, right? So I'm going to say uh, depre uh, depreciated and uh, depreciated. And depreciated, you're going to say it's supposed to be uh, auto, okay, just like that. So depreciated and not de de deprecated and not depreciated. So it's going to be deprecated and deprecated is going to be by default uh, auto. So once I have that done, I can simply go ahead and uh, down here i'm going to go ahead and do the following so i'm going to have two functions one is going to be actually to verify and another one is going to be actually get the password hash so let's check if this is done installing yeah it's done installing and if i go back to python of show documentation uh so f sorry first api documentation you can see this are the two functions we need right here so i'm going to go ahead and actually grab these two functions and go ahead into my code and simply paste them in here so we're going to have to one of them to actually hash the password and one of them to actually get the the hash of that password so in this case we need to get the hash of that password so i'm going to, going to simply going to uh, ahead and going to copy this and instead of my users.py file i'm going to go ahead and import this so i'm going to say uh from uh from utils i'm going to go after this one be from dot dot utils i'm going to go ahead and actually import uh this right here so once i have this i'm going to go ahead and actually hash that password so i'm going to go ahead and paste it here so hash the password and this is going to be the following so you need to pass in the user's password that you want to hash and in this case is very uh, simple to do so we need to go ahead and pass in the user's password. So need to, this is going to be the following. So we're going to say uh, users uh, info, and then you're simply going to pass in that password of that user. So user underscore uh, info, and then you want to get the password of that specific uh, user, right? So user info, and then you want to grab the password. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the password. So great. So that's all we need, and we're going to hash the user's password because we don't want to save the plain password instead of our database. And you can also create an API key for the user if you want, uh, in case you want to use it for other stuff, right? So uh, you can use that if you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually pass in here, uh, pass in here, and then I'm going to say uh, hash user password. Okay. So once we have that, you can also create an API key here if you want for the user, and again, this API key can be used for other things. Okay. So just say uh, create. Uh, uh, API key just here and I'm going to using something to create this API key so I'm going to say user underscore info uh, info and this is going to say uh, API uh, key and this is going to be the following so this is going to be equals to uh, we're going to import secrets so I'm going to go up here and going to import uh, secrets so import uh, secrets just like that so once I have secrets import I can just go ahead and say uh, secrets uh, dot uh, token token hex and then i'm going to simply pass in a value of 20 or 30 let's actually leave it to make, make it 30 it's going to change for us as a random password that you can use for that user so I'm now let's go actually save the user i'm going to say new underscore user uh new user and the new user is going to be equals to the following so we're going to await this process to for it to be done uh, we're going to say uh sorry await and i'm going to say db and i'm going to say uh users right the users collection that we created and then you're simply going to say dot insert uh, uh, insert underscore one okay 
and what do we want to insert we want to insert the user underscore info so that's all we want to insert after that we insert this into a database we're going to just create the created user so now the user is going to be created so created underscore uh, uh user and the created user is going to be equals the phone so we say await i'm going to await this process and we say db and you're going to get the users and then the users you're going to simply say dot uh, find underscore one and you want to find one basing on what factor so we're going to say underscore uh, underscore id and the id is going to be equals to the uh, the new insert the new user dot inserted id so we're going to simply go ahead and say here uh the new underscore user dot inserted underscore id so even whenever you insert a new user it's going to have uh it's going to be turned to this object that has this uh, uh, var uh, uh variable to it called uh, inserted id okay so that's all we want to get from there and that is going to go ahead and actually create that uh, the return to us the user information so we can actually go ahead and actually send the email to the user because you have created the user right and then after that you can return something to the front end. so you can just go ahead and say uh, return created uh, underscore user but now we want to actually control what gets returned to the to the front end and not all the users information right we want to return the users password and all that information so instead of a schema we can actually go ahead and actually try that out here so instead of a schema we can create a schema that define uh, what the user have actually what gets returned to the user into the front end so i'm just going to go ahead and actually create that so i'm going to go ahead and simply copy everything here so i'm going to copy everything here So once we have user response, uh, we're going to uh, control what the user basically, uh, what response the user gets back, right? And uh, basically, we, we want the we want the ID, the name, and we don't want the password field. So I'm going to remove the password. We don't want the password here. I'm going to get rid of that too. And uh, yeah, that's basically what we simply want to return the user: the name of the user, the email of the user, and yeah, everything else stays as the same. So once we have the user response created, I'm going to go simply go ahead and uh, import it. So I'm going to copy this and go inside of my users and I'm going to simply import it right here. So paste it here to import it. And then in here, you can go ahead and specify the response model. So I'm going to say response, uh, response underscore model. And the response model is going to be the, the user's uh, response model. So basically what first API is going to do is going to make sure that the user, whatever gets returned to the uh, the front end, matches the schema that we defined right here, which is going to be the name, the email, and then the ID of that specific user. So that's basically what we, it is that we want to return to the front end. So and, uh, we also need to go ahead and actually send the email, but we'll do just that just in a second. So actually, let's go ahead and, and test this out to make sure everything works. So instead of our main file, we make sure that we have this in, uh, uh, included, this route included included so that's all we need and i'm going to go back in here and uh, clear the terminal and i'm still going to do uvcon uh, uvcon and i'm going to say uh, api dot, dot main and then up and then hyphen hyphen reload flag okay this to uh, load our application whenever we have it saved so we just wait for this to start up Okay, so I set it up and I got an error right here. I, I made an error. So it's called schemes and I, I think you guys maybe probably spotted this when I was typing it out. So I'm going to go inside of my utils and this is going to be schemes right here. So schemes and uh, let's see if, what you, uh, if that changes and if you have any more error. So application has started. So we can now go inside of our browser. I can just go to our browser localhost at port 8000, which is already running right here. So I can just go ahead here and simply do a simple refresh. I'm going to simply refresh the page. So once the page is refreshed, you can see we have that there. So you can just click on this and you can see what we need. So we can actually try this out. Uh, click on try out and you can provide in your email, your username and stuff like that. So let's say John Doe at uh, gmail.com and then our password is just gonna be that password. So let's click on execute and let's see what happens. So it actually should talk to our database and then have the information saved in there. So you can see we have a response of 200, which means the user has been saved and everything works fine. So if I go into my uh, my Euro, my uh, database is right here. So I'm going to go to database and then search for my database. I should I should see that collection right there. So you just go to uh, browse collection. And instead of browse collection, I should be able to see that user uh, information being inserted inside here. So let's just wait for this to load. So 
So once it's loaded up, you can see we have the users collection right here. Uh, and if it's inside the users collection, you can see we have that user created solution door, the email, the password has been hashed, and also we have the API key of that specific user. So that's how you can simply do a simple user registration. So uh, that's basically it for how we can register a user, uh, hash the password, and all of that uh, functionality. So in the next row, we're going to actually go ahead and actually deal with sending of the uh, uh, of the registration email because right now we're supposed to send the email right here, and we haven't done that. So we can just say uh, to do and the to do is just send the, the users uh, email to that user and that's what we're going to be covering in the next tutorial so thanks for watching and if you enjoyed so so far uh give the video give the video a thumbs up like the video and share with uh, anyone who you think might find this helpful and also hit the notification bell so you can get updated whenever i upload the next uh, video so thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one